Really what's happening is, is there's two reactions going to be going on, a forward reaction and a reverse reaction, and at equilibrium, and so that's going to be an important idea. Are we at equilibrium or not? At equilibrium, the forward rate of the forward reaction and the rate of a reverse reaction are equal to each other, and so everything kind of stays constant. So if we look at this reaction that I put up here, and say I was to add into an H2 to a reaction container and cause the forward reaction to go, um, what would happen would be, in the beginning, the reaction rate would be the highest because the concentrations of N2 and H2 are at their highest, and like we talked about with kinetics, as the reaction goes along, our reactants are going to be used up, the rate of our forward reaction is actually going to decrease. However, in the beginning, we have no concentration of our ammonia, in this case our, our product over here, and what happens is initially the rate of going in reverse, going from ammonia back to N2 is zero because I have no concentration of my reactant. Zero concentration of reactant, that means uh, a zero reaction rate. So there's no reverse reaction. However, as the first reaction goes on, the N2 and the H2 goes to make ammonia, the concentration of ammonia increases. So as the concentration of ammonia increases, the rate of this reverse reaction also increases. So what happens is, over time, if we let this reaction reach what's called equilibrium, where, we, where it finds sort of a constant point, the forward reaction is going to decrease, the reverse reaction is going to increase, until such a point where those two reaction rates equal each other. And when that happens, the concentrations of my reactants and, say, products are going to remain constant over time. And that's what we call equilibrium, so where we've let the reaction go until it has reached its sort of happy point where the forward reaction, the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are equal to each other and at equilibrium the concentrations of my species do not change. So, so we need to have a way of recognizing that our reaction is an equilibrium type of reaction and they do that by using this double-headed arrow here. And that means that there is a forward and reverse reaction going on. And this also means that really we write it out and we say we still do have a reactant and a product, but that's not 100% true. There's both reactions are going on and I could have just as easily have reversed this reaction. And we'll actually talk about what happens if we do do that. So when we reach equilibrium, the concentrations of my species remain constant. However, there is a way of showing a relationship between the concentrations of the species called an equilibrium constant, and that is uh, K sub C here. And that's going to be equal to my products divided by my reactants. And so we will talk about how do I come up with this equation uh, in the uh, later video. But the idea is the concentrations of my species is related to some constant. So the equilibrium constant Kc is uh, a number that it corresponds to this actual reaction. And so you can see the idea of saying um, how much ammonia do I make in this reaction becomes a little bit more complex than what we were doing with say precipitation reactions where we said for every one mole of reactant I make one mole of product. Well it's not that easy now. Now we have to actually use an equilibrium constant because there's a ratio between the relative concentrations of my species inside of here. So with this, we're going to find out there's a lot of different K values. So K value means an equilibrium constant. It relates to the concentrations of the species in a given equilibrium based problem. We need to describe which type of equilibrium equation that we're using. So the first one that we do is called KC. And all KC says is that we talk about the species in terms of their concentration and molarity. And that's going to be important. We'll explain by why here in just a second. But as we go along, we're going to find out there is many different types of K values. But the first one we start with is KC. That means when you see these brackets inside the equilibrium expression, it means that we're talking about these uh, species in terms of molarity. So a couple of things we want to start off before we do an actual problem of this is that when I reach dynamic equilibrium, the amounts of reactants and products remain the same, so things do not change. But one of the things we want you to understand is, is that the reactions haven't stopped. They're just equal to each other. So products are going to reactants, reactants are going to product. That's constantly happening. But it, the idea is because the rates are equal to each other, 
the concentrations do not change. So that's why it's called a dynamic equilibrium. So dynamic means is it's still going forward and going reverse, but the idea is we're not going anywhere. Another important idea to remember is that when we have an equilibrium situation, the concentrations of any of my species cannot be zero. So we know that the relative concentrations of these species are related to this equilibrium constant Kc. The idea here is if I put in a zero for any one of these species, I'm not going to get the, my equilibrium expression to equal my equilibrium constant. So this is an important idea. We're going to build off this later. But I, if I have an equilibrium, I have to have some concentration of all of my species inside of there. It might be a very small number, but it will never be zero. And so if we do see a zero, that's going to tell us something. We'll get to that a little bit later. So let's look at this. We'll look at a sample problem. And we're trying to do something very, very simple here. So I've already given you the reaction, and I've given you the equilibrium constant equilibrium expression. Like I said, we will talk about how do I know or how do I find the equilibrium expression later. But with these types of problems in the most general sense, really there's only two things I can do. I can either give you the concentration of all the species and have you calculate Kc, or I can give you Kc and the concentration of some of my species at equilibrium and have you calculate the concentration of one of the species that we don't have information for. So we're going to be doing the latter one here. So I've given you information about N2 and H2. I've given you Kc, and I'm saying um, what's going to be the concentration of ammonia when uh, these two, the concentrations of N2 or H2 are, are known. So this is another idea here. In grading many of these types of questions on exams, I notice easily the number one place people make mistakes in these types of problems is the algebra because we're getting into some um, roots here. So we're, there's a third power, a second power, so we're going to be using various parts of your calculator. You need to be able to raise something to a third power. You need to be able to take uh, a square root or a cube root or, or so on. So we're starting to get that point in general chemistry where you really need to become familiar with your calculator. So here we're looking for ammonia. So I go ahead and solve my equilibrium expression in terms of ammonia. So I multiply both sides by the bottom N2 and H2 raised to the cubed. And then I have ammonia squared by itself. So I take the square root of both sides. I then plug these numbers in and I, I do the calculation. But here you got to remember that it is K times the concentration of N2 times the concentration of H2 cubed. So make sure you know how to do that on your calculator. Typically it's a function y to the x that you have to plug in. And then once I get this complete calculation, then I have to take the square root. So typically on a calculator, the square root is a function by itself because it's so commonly used. And when I'm done, I get a number. And one of the things you need to understand here is Kc is actually unitless. So what happens is, is these numbers here <clears throat> inside of my equilibrium expression become so complex, it becomes very difficult to try to put the proper units in and make sure the proper units come out. It can be too complex. So what chemists do is just say, when we say Kc, it means we're putting all of our numbers in in terms of concentration. and whatever number we get out. If we're, say, here calculating a concentration of ammonia, the answer is going to be in molarity. I know it's molarity because I've given you the value in terms of Kc. So all of our K values are going to be unitless. And that's because we just assume that you know when we talk about the concentrations, they're going to be in molarity.